And on the eighth day, God looked down on his planned paradise and said, I need a caretaker. So God made a farmer. Howdy folks, Darren back with you, Cross Timbers Farm. Welcome to 8th Day Chronicles. Glad to have you with us today. Today is day four of dry down for our hay. Not counting the day we cut, because we cut later in the evening. This is day number four. It's about 11 a.m. right now. The day after we cut, the first day of dry down, we tatted, and the hay stayed in that state the next day, and day number three, I tatted it. I went pretty fast through the field. I kicked this tractor in the like high range third gear. I was, I was moving along. Kicked it at a low RPM, and today is day number four, and I think I'm gonna run over this again with a tether real quick because, let me give you the reason for that. The dew fall that we get during the night, we're entering to that mid to late summer period where our dew fall here in the mountains gets really, really heavy. I noticed this morning when I came out to the farm to take care of our poultry, I had on a pair of muck boots because the grass is just soaked. It almost looks like it's rained. And you could just see the water splashing off my boots walking through that grass around the, around the barn. Very heavy dews. Now last year, last late last fall, we had some of the heaviest dew fall that I've ever saw. This is not that heavy, but it's still heavy dews. And it takes a little bit longer for this to dry off because of that heavy dews. Hay's looking really good. We got some underneath of it that could stand still yet to be kicked around. You can probably see that. Uh, this is some premium hay, and we want to do what we have to do to, to keep this premium level in this hay. I think it would benefit this hay to run this tether over this one more time. Kick it around, let this, we got a good breeze going today, let this breeze really be able to penetrate through this because the dew has kind of got it settled down. The, the, the moisture on it from the dew. I think if we can kick it around, it will speed our drying process up to get all this dew and let the breeze blow through it so we can rake today and possibly bale this evening. We have dodged bullets all day and all night last night. Our weather forecast when we cut said the, the final forecast that I looked at, it had rain chances a lot earlier, higher. But right when we started cutting the, the rain chances for today in the long seven day forecast had dropped to like 20%. Now they're back up to 50. We had like 55% last night. And I've been watching the radar really closely and we've had rain go all around us last night and this morning so far thank you lord we've had no rain here on our farm last night or this morning other than really heavy dew fall this time of year you have isolated showers and thunderstorms that uh you may or may not get rain so it's about uh, 83 degrees right now. We're gonna fire up the Kubota and fire up the Rhino PT207 two basket hay tether. I'm gonna run over this field really fast. Uh, probably kick this, this Kubota into high gear and high range, probably third gear. And we're gonna hit it quick, get it flipped, and then get the tether put back in the barn and get the rake hooked up and the whole time got our fingers crossed that it don't rain and uh, get this this field raked into wind rows and possibly bail this uh, start bailing this evening at least so stay with us i'm not going to film any of this tedding we done a tedding video earlier in the week and it's redundant just to keep showing that so 
we're going to Ted now and I'll bring you back when we get the rake hooked up start raking this. Stick with us. Just finished Teddy. Skies don't look good. We've been dodging literally bullets, what I call rain coming. Storms, rain pop-up showers all around us and it don't look good. We're gonna keep going. Uh, if it rains, it rains. We knew that going in, we were rolling the dice. But the tedding is done. This is some premium hay. Really, really happy with this hay. We're gonna go ahead and get the rake hooked up and get ready to start raking. Uh, we put the tether away. Hopefully I don't have to get that tether back out because it's rained. Okay, we have our four wheel inline hay rake hooked up. These little rakes are fantastic for small scale hay equipment. If you need to get into small pastures, small paddocks, tighter quarter areas, these things are fantastic. Uh, a New Holland roller bar rake is probably next on my list. I think I could get those into tight places too, but I'm a little bit on the fence about the size wind rows they're gonna make for our Farm Max mini round baler. But that yet, that's yet to be seen. We got it hooked up and it's leveled. We, we parked it out here next to the barn and got it level where all the tines, the rake wheel tines are all evenly pressure on the ground. We got it adjusted to where our three point lever has the stop set to where it won't dig into the sod. And I'm still a little concerned about this hay, the moisture content of it. Um, no rain yet here but the radar has shown pop-up storms all around us. And according to the weather, they're not supposed to produce a lot of rain, like 0 0.01, which that's just a light shower. Regardless, we don't want any rain on this if we can help it. Testing the moisture in your hay, knowing when to start raking and baling. I see a lot of folks uh, will rake their hay into windrows like a day or two before they, or maybe sometimes even three before they bale. And I don't quite understand that. If your hay's not done yet with the moisture level, it still needs to dry a little more. I don't understand the concept of bunching it together. I would prefer to leave that spread out. We've got our rake hooked up yet, but we're not raking yet because I've got a little bit of concern about this hay. Moisture content in your hay is paramount. I talk a lot about small family farms and premium hay, how those small farms, folks that are passionate about their hay will go the extra mile to make the best hay they can. And that's usually where you end up buying premium high quality hay. Thought my glass is about to fall off my hat. And that's what we strive for. We strive for high quality premium hay. And the moisture content of that hay has a lot to do with that. A lot to do with it. The, the, the modern moisture testers out there are good. Uh, I talked, I think, in a light, one of our later videos about, you know, bale mounted, bale chamber mounted moisture testers, and those are good. The windrow testers where you can stuff hay into a bucket and put so many pounds of pressure down on it and check your moisture. Those are, I, I don't own one of those, but I've seen them in use, and I've got mixed feelings about those. The... I feel like the most reliable moisture tester you can get, besides in a lab or something like that, out in the field, is to use the old fashioned way of twist test and just feel, and that comes with experience. And when you think 
it's ready. Bail one bale. Get your baler up, get everything going. Make you one bale of hay. And that is if all of your hay is spread out pretty evenly. You don't have thin areas and thick areas. If you do, you need to make, make a bale in each of those areas. But make one bale. As soon as that bale comes out your bale door and hits the ground, shut your equipment off, get you a bale moisture tester, one with a probe you can stick in it and check that moisture right then. Don't wait till eight hours later or the next morning. By then that grass hay could have started to sweat some and probably is and you'll get a false reading, you'll get a higher reading. Check it as soon as it comes out of that baler. Shut everything down, take five minutes of your time, jump off, have you one of those bale moisture testers. We own one by Agritronics. Check it for the moisture level. That's when I feel, now I'm no scientist. I've not studied any of this in a lab, so take it for what it's worth. <laughs> Uh, just from one hillbilly hay farmer. Um, experience has shown me that that's the time to get the very best moisture content reading of your hay. So we're going to check this first and I'm going to step right here and grab some hay. I've got a really nice hay and it's come out of a pretty thick area. All right, the twist test. I'm going to take this hay I'm going to tw start twisting it. Keep reaching around until I can make this into almost a rope. Twisting it tight. Okay. Listening for how crunchy it is. Okay, it's bound tight. All right, when I let this go, it should just spring right back out. And it didn't. Look how still roped up it is. That did not spring out that good. Okay, I'm gonna double it over and I'm gonna twist it again. That did not spring out that good. Okay, the old timer's way of checking moisture to know when your hay's ready to bale. Those old timers before moisture meter testers and things, they knew what they were doing. And I use the term old timers. You'll hear me use that some on my channel. Because that's how much respect I have for these old farmers that knew what they were doing. And the term old timers is a term used that I use for respect. There's no derogatory meaning behind that term. That is, I have the utmost respect for those, those old timers. They knew what they were doing without all the modern technology that we have. Next thing, take your hay, and I put it to my face. I put it to my arm. Okay, I can, I can feel a little bit of moisture still in this. Uh, I don't know if you can see the color of it. That is some good hay, but it's still fairly green and it still has a wet, a not wet, slightly damp feel to it. I would say if I bail this right now, one bail, check it, I'd say we're looking at 30% or higher. Uh, it's not ready. We've had hardly no sun today. We had really nice sun for three days. No sun out so far today very overcast very cloudy and yesterday the hay was well on its way i thought uh, maybe by midday tomorrow it'll be it'll be good enough to start raking and bailing i don't think so because we've had nothing but overcast and cloud cover all morning and all day so far I'm going to go check another area. Let's do that. I'm not going to do it dependent upon this one spot. We're in a totally different area of the field. And I'm going to walk right here. Randomly. 
grab some hay. Boy, that's some good hay. All right. I got a little much. Let me throw a little of it off. Okay, there's some good to fit my hand. All right. Now I'm going to start twisting. Okay, that sprung out a little better. That's a little better. It still has a moist feel to it. Yeah, this is a little further along than the first patch we tested, uh, but still, all right, when you get some hay like this, you ought to be able to twist it and it break. Let me get it a little closer like that. Look at it, Don't, it won't break. Some of it did, but the majority of it did not. Okay. Hey, there's some sun. Wow. All right. Thank you, Lord. We need to wait. Uh, I feel like, and I'm just taking a rant, a guess. This is totally a guess. If I bail now, my first bail would be in excess of 30 to 35% moisture. Uh, I need another day. And let's just uh, cross our fingers and hope we don't get more rain. No rain, not more, but no rain. Uh, can you see the color of this hay? Boy, is that not some pretty stuff. This right here is mostly Timothy. See there, that one did not spring back out like the first patch I got. Does just a little, but I mean, when this stuff's dry, it'll really spring back out. Yeah, it ain't even thinking about breaking. And it just feels a little bit damp. All right. I was sure hoping to bail this today, but looks like we're going to have five days. Uh, could I go ahead and bail it today? Yeah, yeah, I could. And uh, not put it in the barn to risk a barn fire, just store it outside, throw a tarp over it on some pallets. Run the risk of mold in the hay. And, it, and if I get mold in my hay, it's ruined. You might as well just do away with it. So with mold, uh, your hay's ruined. Uh, just the same as it had poured the rain on it for days and you had to leave it in the field and just rake it off into the woods. Um, I'm not willing to risk that. So, and, and bear in mind, different areas of the country and the weather patterns and how the weather is and the humidity levels and things of that nature are very different for different areas of the country. If you're bailing hay, cutting hay in New Mexico or Arizona, uh, Wyoming even maybe, uh, you could probably, depending on the, the humidity in your area or wherever you are, if you just happen to be in an area where that humidity's not really that bad, you could get by with two, two day hay or uh whatever here we have a lot of humidity and sometimes the humidity can almost get unbearable at times be even hard to you can get out and start working at 90 degrees and the humidity at 90 percent and it's even hard to breathe it gets so so thick but with our humidity and the weather we've had today i think we're going to, have to wait till tomorrow we will bring you back as soon as we start raking. Uh, I 
think for today we're going to leave it live just like it is. We did tad it a while ago quickly. I went through on the tether of that tractor in high range third gear. And man, I'm telling you, I was hitting the ice pots. A uh, couple times I hit a few bumps. It about bounced me out of the seat. Thank goodness I had a seat belt on. Uh, we went over it quickly at low RPM and higher speed where the tether wasn't just keep this damaging the leaves on our hay because the tether's a violent implement. So you gotta be careful with the tether when your hay gets dry like this. And we were very careful running on a low RPM, but at a higher gear to go through it quicker, go over it faster, but still yet stir it up and kick it around for better dry down. So that's done. The tether's, uh, hopefully the tedding's over. If we get no rain, I don't think I'll ted this no more. Tomorrow we'll rake it. So cross your fingers for no rain and uh, we'll come back with you probably tomorrow. Uh, the hail tail swing. But I'll be back with you and we'll start uh, raking and bailing.